We know that products of electrolysis depend on nature of electrolyte and type of electrode we have used. If the electrode is inert with respect to the electrolyte, inert means it is completely non-reactive. Corrosion is the process of metals will get oxidized to its oxides or sulfides by the influence of the constituents of environment. If the metal is covered with or connected with more electropositive method that will be called it as cathodic protection. Hello everyone, this is Harshita Bhavasa from Vidya Shram PU College Temple of Excellence. Today I am going to start session 4 from the chapter Electrochemistry. In the last class we have discussed about conductors, types of conductors, conductance of electrolytic solutions, measurement of the conductivity of ionic solutions and experimental determination of conductance of a given electrolytic solution. These are the concepts which we have discussed already in the previous session. In today's session, we will discuss about electrolytic cells and electrolysis, quantitative aspects of electrolysis, Faraday's first law and second law of electrolysis, the factors that determine the products of electrolysis. Okay, these are the important concepts which we will discuss in current session. First, we will get to know what is electrolytic cell. A cell which convert electrical energy into chemical energy will be called as electrolytic cell. Okay, a cell which converts electrical energy into chemical energy is called electrolytic cell. The decomposition of electrolytes into simpler substances by passing electric current through electrolytes is called electrolysis. Electrolysis means if you understand the word itself, lysis means breaking, electro means electric current. By using electric current, the decomposition of electrolytes into simpler substances is called as electrolysis. In the electrolytic cell, there is a little bit difference of electrochemical cell. There is a difference between electrochemical and electrolytic cell. Okay, electrochemical cells which we have already seen in the previous session. What are the differences means? Electrochemical cell will convert chemical energy into electrical energy but electrolytic cell will convert electrical energy into chemical energy and in the electrochemical cell anode will be negative and cathode will be positive. But in electrolytic cell, anode will be positive and cathode will be negative side will be present. Okay. These are the major difference between electrolytic and electrochemical cells. Next, quantitative aspects of electrolysis. Michael Faraday, who was the first scientist who gave the quantitative aspects of electrolysis. He gave two laws of electrolysis that is Faraday's first law of electrolysis and Faraday's second law of electrolysis and both the laws are very much important for the examination purpose and what are the statement we will see one by one. First we will see Faraday's first law of electrolysis. The mass of the substance liberated or deposited or dissolved at the electrodes is directly proportional to the quantity of electric current pass it through the electrolytic solution or melt. How much electric current has been produced over the electrode correctly or that much equal into mass of substance liberated or deposited or dissolved at the electrodes. Okay, So, mass of the substance is directly proportional to the, the quantity of electric current passed through the electrolytes. So, the mass of the substance will be represented by W and Passing electric current will be in the charges. So, charges will be represented by coulombs Q. Okay. Q is in coulombs that is charge is in coulombs. I is in ampere and T is in seconds. A coulomb is the quantity of charge when a current of an 1 ampere is passed for 1 second. That is the amount of charge in coulombs Q equal to current in amperes into time in seconds. So, current in amperes I into time in seconds T. So, W is directly proportional to I into T because Q equal to I into T. So, W equal to Z into I into T where Z is constant. When, whenever proportionality symbol is present, we know that constant should be given. So, Z is constant. 
see here where z is a constant known as electrochemical equivalent and it is characteristic of the substance deposited when current of 1 ampere is passed for 1 second that is 1 coulomb q equal to 1 w will be equal to z thus electrochemical equivalent can be defined as the mass of the substance deposited during electrolysis by 1 coulomb of charge Okay, the mass of substances liberated, deposited or dissolved at the electrodes is directly proportional to the quantity of electric current was given to the solution. So, W is directly proportional to Q. Q is equivalent to I into T that is amperes in current and time in seconds. Okay, so W in equal to Z into I into T, Z is nothing but constant, I into T is nothing but Q. Next, we will see one example. When a charge of 1 coulomb is passed through silver nitrate solution. We have taken the silver nitrate solution and when a charge of 1 coulomb is passed through the silver nitrate solution, the amount of silver deposited is 0.001118 gram. This is the value of electrochemical equivalent of silver. The amount of electricity required for oxidation or reduction depends on the stoichiometry of the electrode reaction. For example, in the reaction, silver is getting reduced and it is forming pure silver. One mole of the electron is required for the reduction of one mole of silver ions. Here reduction is going to happen and we know that charge on one electron is equal to 1.6021 into 10 to the power of 19 coulombs. This is the one electron charge. Therefore, the charge on one mole of electrons is equal to one mole means Avogadro's constant Na into charge of one electron. So, Avogadro's constant 6.023 into 10 to the power of 23 per mole into charge of electron 1.6021 into 10 to the power of minus 19. After multiplication, 96,487 concentration per mole will be given. This quantity of electricity is called Faraday and it is represented by symbol F. So, this is 1 Faraday equal to this much and it will be represented by F. Faraday is defined as the total charge carried by 1 mole of electrons. Total charge that is in electric current is required or carried by 1 mole of electrons. For example, approximate calculations we use 1 Faraday equal to approximately 96,500 Coulombs. Next, Faraday's second law of electrolysis. The masses of different substances liberated or deposited or dissolved by passing same amount of electricity through different electrolytic solution are proportional to their respective chemical equivalent masses. We have taken different masses of different substances in different electrolytic solution. But the amount of electric current, whatever it is passed, it is same amount, okay. But liberation or deposited or dissolved at the electrodes will be different and it is irrespective of their chemical equivalent masses, okay. Here, different masses will be there, different electrolytic solutions will be there, but same electric current, but it will show or it will be irrespective or it will be proportional to the its chemical equivalent. For example, when the same current is passed through the solutions of sulfuric acid and copper sulphate for the same period of time, then mass of copper deposited by mass of hydrogen gas liberated equal to equivalent mass of copper divided by equivalent mass of hydrogen. Okay. Next, the factors that determine the products of electrolysis. What are the product, what are the factors which affect the products of electrolysis? We will see there are four factors majorly one by one we will see the nature of electrolyte and the type of electrodes used. What kind of electrolyte we have used and what type of electrodes we have used. Standard electrode potentials of the competing ions. We know what is standard electrode potentials. Various standard electrode potentials will be present based on their value what will happen in competing ions. Concentration of the solution of the electrolyte and next over potential. Okay, these are the four factors majorly which affect the products of electrolysis. First one, the nature of the electrolyte and the type of electrodes used. We know that products of electrolysis depend on nature of electrolyte and type of electrode we have used. If the electrode is inert, 
with respect to the electrolyte. Inert means it is completely non-reactive. Okay, if the electrode is inert with the electrolyte, then what will happen? It does not participate in the chemical reaction and acts only as source or sink of electrons. Whenever the electrode is not at all reacting with the electrolyte, it will be source or it will be sink of electrons. It will not participate with the reaction, whatever it is happening in that electrolytic solution. But if the electrode is reactive, it will participate with the electrolyte and it will be present in the chemical reaction. Thus, the products of electrolysis may be different for reactive or non-reactive electrodes. If it is electrode is reactive, it will participate in the chemical reaction. If the electrode is inert with the electrolyte, it will not participate in the chemical reaction. Next, standard electrode potentials of the competing ions. The products of electrolysis depends on the standard electro potentials and how it will be react means when many cations are present on passing electric current the ion that has the highest standard electrode potential is get reduced first in the preference to the other cations whenever the current has been passed the highest standard electrode potential will get reduced first among all the cations okay which is having highest electrode potential it will get reduced first on the other hand when many an anions are present on passing electric current the anion that has least electrode potential is oxidized first in the preference to the other anions among the anions which is having least standard electrode potential it will get oxidized first we know what is oxidized what is oxidation, what is reduced or what is reduction. Whenever cation is having highest electrode potential, it will get reduced first among others. And whenever anion is having least electrode potential, it will get oxidized first among anions. Okay. For example, in an aqueous solution of sodium chloride NaCl, Na plus and H plus are the competing ions. On passing electric current, H plus is getting reduced in the preference of Na plus at the cathode producing H2 gas. This is because standard electrode potential of hydrogen is more than that of sodium. Okay, that's why H plus is getting reduced, Na plus will get reduced later due to cation is having more or highest electrode potential comparing to the sodium cation. Next one, concentration of the solution of electrolyte. Products of electrolytes depends on the concentration of electrolyte. The products formed can be different when the solutions of the same substance but of different concentrations are electrolytes. It may be different whenever the electrolyte is same okay but the concentration will be different then obviously the products of electrolysis will be also different. For example, when dilute sulfuric acid is electrolyzed O2 is evolved at the anode because of the half cell reaction. H2O, O2 and 4H plus with 4 electrons. When concentrated sulfuric acid is electrolyzed, sulfate in aqueous solution is formed as per the half cell reaction. Okay, one side oxygen, another side sulfate ion will be formed. Next, over potential or over voltage. It is also the product of electrolysis will be depend on over voltage or over potential. Over potential is defined as the minimum excess potential over the standard electrode potential required to discharge an ion. It is also a minimum excess potential over the standard electrode potential required to discharge an ion. Generally, liberation of gases involve over potential depending on the type of electrode. This is mainly due to the polarization and adsorption of gases. Why this over voltage or over potential will happen means mainly due to the adsorption of gases or polarization of gases and then the minimum excess of potential will be given in the standard electrode potential to discharge an ion. These are the four major factors which affect the products of electrolysis. We will see one problem. What current strength in ampere will be required to liberate 10 gram of chlorine from sodium chloride solution in 1 hour? Atomic mass of chlorine is 35.5. Okay. Sodium chloride means Na plus and Cl minus. 2 Cl 
minus plus 2e electrons means 2 electrons will be liberated and 2f and one mole 2f in means 2 into Faraday 96,500 coulombs and 2 into 35.45 grams here 2 moles right that's why and 2 into 96,500 coulomb liberate 2 into 35.45 gram of chlorine so this is Q and liberates 10 gram of chlorine Q equal to 2 into Faraday into 10 divided by 2 into 35.45 into 45. So it will given it will be equal to 27,221.44 concentration. Q will be equal to I into T. Amperes in current into time in seconds. We have to find out ampere in current. So I will be taken for left hand side and Q by T. Q we know already 27,221.44. 44 divided by time is 1 into 60 into 60 minute and also second. So 7.56 amperes will be produced here. Okay, this is how the ampere or how much current will be used in the given concentration. Next, batteries. Batteries are voltaic cells that are designed as convenient portable sources of electricity. Batteries are nothing but voltaic cell and it will be designed for the convenient portable sources of electricity. It can be take wherever we want. So there are two types of batteries that is primary batteries and secondary batteries. First one primary batteries. A primary battery is one that cannot be recharged. It cannot be recharged again and again. It, can, it will be only one time usage battery. In these batteries, reaction occurs only once and battery becomes dead. When the completely electricity will be discharged, that battery will become dead when the cell reaction reaches to equilibrium. The example of primary battery is dry cell, which is used commonly in our clocks and transistors. Okay, primary batteries are the batteries which will be used once when the reaction when the battery is completely used or reaction is completely over, it will be considered as dead and it will reach to equilibrium. No re reaction will happen again. Okay. A dry cell consists of a cylindrical zinc container acting as anode and graphite rod act centered by powered manganese dioxide and carbon acts as cathode. A paste of manganese oxide and ammonium chloride in water that acts as electrolyte fills the gap between the anode and cathode. However, they can be written approximately as follows. Anode zinc plus Zn2 plus plus 2 electrons and cathode manganese dioxide and ammonium ion plus electrons form manganese hydroxide plus ammonia. In the reaction at cathode, manganese is reduced from the 4 Ox plus 4 oxidation state to plus 3 oxidation state. Ammonia produced in the reaction forms a complex with zinc to form Zn ammonium, ammonium zinc. This protects the swelling of cell. The cell has a potential of nearly 1.5 voltage. Okay, here also, here zinc container will be act as anode and graphite rod will be present center. So powdered manganese dioxide and carbon will act as cathode and also paste of manganese hydroxide, manganese oxide and ammonium chloride will act as electrolyte. For primary cell, mercury cell is the best example suitable for low current devices like hearing aids, watches etc. Consisting of zinc, mercury, amalgam as anode and paste of mercury oxide and carbon as cathode. These are the very much important and what are anode and cathode you have to be noted down. Zinc mercury amalgam will be as anode. Paste of mercury oxide and carbon will act as cathode. The electrolyte is a paste of potassium hydroxide and zinc oxide. Okay, this is overall reaction. And this is at anode as zinc will get reduced to zinc 2 plus and manganese oxide will ammonium plus electron. This is manganese hydroxide. Here plus 4 to plus 3 oxidation state will reach by manganese hydroxide and here it will form ammonium zincate complex and the potential will be 1.5 voltage. This is the mercury cell. 
Next, secondary batteries. The batteries that can be recharged by electric current through them in the opposite direction so that they can be used again are called secondary batteries. What are the batteries we will use in mobiles and all will be used for that will be examples of secondary batteries because whenever the charge is discharged we will recharge again and again by using electric current. A good secondary cell can undergo a large number of discharging and charging cycles. The most important secondary cell is the lead storage battery commonly used in automobiles and inverters. Secondary batteries. A lead storage battery consists of electrodes made by lead grids. The anode grid is filled with spongy lead and cathode grid is filled with lead dioxide. In anode, spongy lead will be used. In cathode, lead dioxide will be used. The electrolyte is 38% of sulfuric acid. Fiberglass sheets between the grids prevent shorting due to the physical contact. In between, fiberglass will be used because to prevent the shorting happened by the physical contact. Okay. This is lead storage battery. See here lead oxide and here spongy lead at anode cathode lead oxide will be used and as an electrolyte 38 percentage of sulfuric acid will be used and the reactions in the lead bat lead storage battery anode lead and sulfate ion will form lead sulfate plus two electrons and in the cathode lead oxide plus sulfate will form with the hydrogen gas and two electrons lead sulfate plus water the overall cell reaction lead and lead oxide with the sulfuric acid will form lead sulfate with water. This is the overall reaction. Recharging. When the cell recharges as an electrolytic cell, it uses electrical energy and half cell and overall reactions are reversed. On charging, the battery, the reaction is reversed and lead sulfate and anode and cathode is converted to lead and lead oxide respectively. When recharging what will happen and charging what will happen they are showing here lead sulphate plus water gives to lead oxide and lead plus H2SO4 whenever this reaction will get reversed. This is the recharging reaction and it will whenever it is reversed it will happen for the left hand side reaction. Next is fuel cells. Whatever we have seen secondary and primary cells those were voltaic cells here also galvanic cells that are designed to convert the energy of combustion of fuels like hydrogen, methane, methanol etc. directly into electrical energy are called fuel cells. Combustion of fuels into electrical energy called fuel cells. One of the most successful fuel cell is hydrogen fuel cell that uses the reaction of hydrogen with oxygen to form water. Most common fuel cell is hydrogen fuel cell. In this cell, hydrogen and oxygen are bubbled through porous carbon electrodes into concentrated aqueous sodium hydroxide solution. In this cell, hydrogen and oxygen will be given out through the cathode electrodes, the porous cathode electrodes in the concentrated aqueous solution of sodium hydroxide solution. Catalysts like finely divided platinum or palladium metal are incorporated into the electrodes for increase the rate of electrode reactions. The water vapors produced during the reaction are condensed. Okay. Here the catalyst will be used as platinum or palladium into the electrodes and the water vapors produced during the reaction will get condensed. This is hydrogen fuel cell. What are the reactions means at cathode oxygen and water with four electrons hydroxide will form and here with water and that hydroxide water will be liberated. Overall reaction hydrogen from one side oxygen from one side overall water will be get condensed. Hydrogen fuel cells have been used for years to provide electricity and water during space flights. Fuel cells produce no pollutants and convert about 70% of fuels bond energy into power compared to 40% for a coal fired power plant and 20% of a gasoline engine. There has been tremendous progress in the development of new electrode materials, better catalysts and electrolytes for increasing the efficiency of fuel cells. So many developments have been made for the engines also. These have been used in automobiles on an experimental basis. Fuel cells are pollution free and in the view of their future importance, a variety of fuel cells have been fabricated and 
triad. Usually these fuel cells will be pollution free. So the development has made very widely and they have tried in various ways. Okay. Next is corrosion. Corrosion is the process whereby metals are oxidized to their oxides and sulfides due to the action of constituents of environment. Corrosion is the process of metals will get oxidized to its oxides or sulfides by the influence of the constituents of environment. Okay. The rusting of iron is a common form of corrosion. You have seen the rusting of iron. It is a long time reaction process but also you have seen that one. Rust is not a direct product of the reaction between iron and oxygen but arises through a complex called electrochemical process. What they are telling it is not a just a product of iron and oxygen. When the influence of iron and oxygen will get formed, the rust will be formed on the surface of iron. No, it is a complex of electrochemical reaction. Almost all metals except the least active metals such as gold, platinum and palladium are attacked by the constituents of environment and undergo corrosion. Least reactive like gold, platinum and silver will not get oxidized very easily when it will react with environment. For example, silver tarnishes, copper develops a green coating, lead or stainless steel lose their luster due to the corrosion. Usually gold, platinum, palladium will not get corroded very fastly or it will not corrode when attacked by the constituents of environment but silver, copper and other metals it will tarnish or it will form a green color and lead will or stainless steel will lose their luster due to the corrosion. Corrosion causes enormous damage to buildings, bridges, ships and many other articles made of iron. Iron does not rust in dry air and in vacuum. Usually Corrosion causes enormous of damage to buildings also, bridges and ships because they have used the iron metals to build those buildings or to make the ship. So iron does not rust in dry air and in vacuum. In the dry air or in the vacuum, iron will not get rust. Rusting of iron is the common example of corrosion. The rusting of iron is the most common example for the corrosion. First, next we will see corrosion of iron itself that we will call it as rusting. The corrosion of iron occurs in the presence of water and air. Usually corrosion of iron will occur in presence of water and air. That is what we have told in the dry air, corrosion or rusting of iron will not happen. The mechanism of formation of rust on iron surface is quite complex but it may be considered essentially as electrochemical phenomena. At a particular spot of iron object oxidation takes place and that spot behaves as anode. Where the oxidation will take place that part will be considered as anode. At the anodic regions iron will get oxidized to Fe2 plus and 2 Fe will get reduced to Fe2 plus plus 4 electrons that was the oxidation region. Electrons released at anodic spot move through the metal and go another spot on the metal and reduce oxidation or reduce oxygen in the presence of hydrogen. After the anodic reaction, it will move on to the metal to get reduced with oxygen. So oxygen plus hydrogen with electrons, water will be given out at the potential of 1.23 volts. This is the corrosion of iron. We have to analyze that in the absence of water, in the dry air, it will not get rust. And in the anodic region only, oxidation will take place or what, where the oxidation process is going to happen, that region will be considered as anodic region. The overall reaction is iron plus water plus hydrogen. It will form Fe2 plus and water. The Fe2 plus ions migrate through the moisture to the cathodic region where they are further oxidized to Fe3 plus. After anodic region, it will move on to the cathodic region. It further oxidized to Fe2 plus to Fe3 plus. Oxidized means it will lose of electrons. So 2 plus electrons to 2, 3 plus ions will form, which combines with oxygen and water to form rust. After the formation or, or the after the oxidation of Fe2 plus to Fe3 plus, it will react with oxygen and water further to form rust. The rust formula is Fe 2O3 into hydrate. This is the overall rusting 
process next prevention of corrosion how to control or how to prevent the corrosion corrosion is prevented by eliminating corrosive factors some commonly used methods are you can remove or prevent the corrosion by eliminating the corrosive factors by so many methods what are those methods first one by surface coating on the surface coating of metal or iron you can prevent the corrosion how can you surface coat by applying oil grease paint or varnish on the surface by oftenly applying oil or grease to the iron or to the metal or painting or varnishing it will not react with water or air present in the environment so it will not get corroded or by coating or depositing a thin layer of any other metal which is more electro positive which is more electro positive in the reactive side that metal should be coated over the metal for example iron surface can be protected from corrosion by depositing a thin layer of zinc nickel chromium on it if the iron is coated with zinc chromium nickel any one of these it will not react that much as iron copper or brass can be protected by coating it with a thin layer of tin tinning of brass utensils is a very common practice in our country by galvanization that is preventing of corrosion by iron by zinc coating if you cover the iron by zinc that will be called it as galvanization next by connecting metal to a more electro positive metal if you connect the metal with electro positive metal as long as more electro positive metal is there the given metal does not get corroded for example iron can be protected from corrosion by connecting it to a black plate of zinc or magnesium this method is corrosion this method of corrosion protection is called cathodic protection if the metal is covered with or connected with more electro positive method that will be called it as cathodic protection by forming insoluble phosphate or chromate coating by forming means insoluble means phosphate should not get dissolved with the environment or any other acids metal surfaces are treated with phosphoric acid to form a insoluble phosphate formation of a thin chromate layer also prevents the corrosion of metals using anti rust solutions solutions of alkaline phosphates and alkaline chromates are generally used as anti rust materials or solutions for example iron articles are dipped in boiling alkaline sodium phosphate solution when a protective insoluble sticking film of iron phosphate is formed you have to apply or dip in that anti rusting solutions like alkaline phosphates or alkaline chromates then also a thin layer will formed and it will not give the chance to get corroded these are the preventive methods to prevent for the corrosion of iron like surface coating by connecting a metal with electro positive metal and by forming insoluble phosphates and also using anti rust solution these are the four methods which prevent the corrosion and here completes a chapter called electrochemistry i hope you have understood completely the electrochemistry chapter whatever i have taught we'll meet in the next upcoming new chapter till that thank you